Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's BSV Open Circuit Gamma Division 2, brought to you by Lit Team Aussie Broadband and Aftershock PC. I'm Quiddy, and I'm here with Ro. Uh, what a first game that we've had. We saw both these teams, you know, you know, quite one of them being able to win out on the situation, but a pretty hesitant game. Uh, these two teams, we on game two versus with uh, Team Cerberus versus Corbab Gaming with Team Cerberus on the blue side, Yone coming out as the first band. Yeah, pretty back and forth for our first one. I'm interested to see if the competitive nature of the game is reflected in this one as well, and thus maybe a competitive league overall, which uh, circuit rather, which would be pretty interesting for future matches because the more competitive it is, of course, you don't know who's going to win, and that makes yeah. it all the more interesting. But for now, uh, two junglers hit the, hit the ban list as well as the Yone. Yeah, two junglers that we usually don't see uh, hit the ban list, uh, potentially target banning the players here. Now, wow, looks like another jungler going to be taken off the board with Lee Sin here. They're really targeting these jungle bans. Uh, of course, these champions, so far, like we said, skirmishing is very important, and all these champions are very good at skirmishing. Yeah, you can say that again. These are definitely the, the solo queue. And yet another strong, strong skirmishes. It might just be the... the... The, uh, the only pattern you might be able to take between the, the champions that are picked <laughs> and banned. Yeah, there's a LeBlanc again being taken off the board now. Very different uh, bans coming through from game two. Looks like I'm uh, definitely targeting the players now. We do see the Twitch come in. Uh, potential flex pick uh, with the AD and the jungle looks like uh, more towards the AD side these days. And of course, having the option to go both AP and AD. Yeah, and last game we saw a really weird first pick. I reckon you can say that again for this this game. Twitch is definitely not uh, the the kind of thing that you're just like, yes, I want that in the first pick. And again, the Ezreal comes in to counter it mm. because that is just the AD high. And we're even going to see an early Yumi, Yumi. no fear. Uh, because Good. Twitch is not the strongest of laners in terms of killing you. Uh, he can really, really hurt if you disrespect his uh, invis. But if you're able to properly identify when he's trying to kill you, then it's pretty easy to play around it. But the the, the Ezreal Yumi is, of course, a powerhouse later on. But mm -hmm. I'm really scared for the early game, especially because they've shown it this early. Yeah, it looks like they are going to... Might be going for the Protect the President's comp here with Lulu with that Twitch. Going to be running on that Twitch for the Hyper Carry. Uh, you know, it's something that... Of course, having that stealth and the whimsy as well for that move speed is able to catch people out, but that depends heavily on your game state and the room that you have to do so. So it looks like uh, the side of Team Cerberus is going to possibly look for this Twitch. Of course, Oriana as well being hovered, a great utility champion to set things up also. And we're just progressing further and further towards the late game fantasy here. We have got Oriana, Twitch, Lulu, Yumi, Ezreal. It's just so much scaling. And I, I'm so interested to see if we're just going to be piling on the scaling or just randomly pivoting to... Uh, but we're, um, there, there it is. is. We're piling it on. We're piling it on, ladies and gentlemen, with the on. And, you know, another hyperscaling tank uh, becomes unkillable late game. And, of course, having that item upgrade is gonna be a bit, bit of a deal in the late game. See, Jarvan does get taken away again, targeting the jungler. Yeah, and with so many junglers taken off the field and you're still going for early game junglers, I can't help but think that it's gonna be just a scaling fiesta with the comps thus far. And what what I'm thinking about in my head is where's the Kale? Where's uh, the Vladimir? That is, there it is. is exactly <laughs> on my mind. Uh, those are the kind of things that I'm kind of like, okay, this could indeed come in. But wow, wow, is it. This is going to be a, a blowout, I feel, because whoever, whichever team actually manages to get stuff done in the early game is going to access their scaling so much faster and then just shut mm. out the enemy team. I, I'm very scared. The Silas band's really weird to me, by the way. You, you see Oriana. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bit where maybe maybe they want to you know take it away from top lane as well. They, yeah, yeah. Silas also being able to be flexed onto that lane. Another jungler being taken off the board in terms of Kindred again, like you said, targeting that scaling. Let's see, they're gonna pick here. Of course, uh, you know, this feels like 
back in season five, season six, where teams are just going to play scaling because the scaling champions at the time, such as Azir and Nivea, were strong. So all ah. you did see was like a farm fest. Now we did see Diana being taken here, uh, potentially either being flexed in the jungle or the mid. A great flex pick that we don't know where it's going to go yet. I really don't like the Diana because it's it's it. Now we finally got some dissonance. Uh, you have these like Orn is not going to be able to provide very much until he's at least level six for the skirmishes. Ezreal Yumi is going to have pretty chill early game, but then you have Diana randomly splashed in. She can't scale very well if you're into a competent team, and she relies a lot on this. This, this the this KO. KO. Um, and she relies a lot on snowballing, but you have all of the scaling shown. That can't really help you snowball very well and and so i'm i'm very scared for this diana you you reckon they potentially picked the diana just for the ultimate really maybe but it's, it's so hard to access kale oriana lulu twitch <laughs> as a diana without just getting blown up and uh it's such a it's such an awkward pivot to show yeah Orn and then divert into this Zinzao and diana Especially going up against all of the scaling, uh, I'm I'm very scared. I'm not sure how this game is going to go because I feel like it should just be a Twitch versus the world pretty easily. Yeah, yeah definitely with the with the Kale and the Lulu uh, and the Oriana too. You are looking to kind of protect the president and having that Twitch being the all star on your team. Now on the side of Corbab Gaming. Of course, like you said, a bit odd rounding the team comp with Zinzao, another kind of early champion that really wants to snowball leads early. And then you now kind of have a mixed comp identity. Like, do you want to play the late game or do you want to snowball early? But having these two champions in the form of Zinzao and Dyna, I feel like, uh, you know, Corbab Gaming, they're on a ticking time bomb. Absolutely. And it's a bomb that I'm not sure they, they have the tools to defuse. Kale has absolutely no reason to die against this Orn and Sinzao. It's so hard for Orn to actually focus, uh, do anything to this Kale. Uh, the Udir can definitely farm a lot faster than Sinzao and probably defuse a lot of the potential pressure he can put out. It's really mm -hmm. going to be all right. about this mid jungle taking down Oriana. And other than that, I, I don't know how they're going to actually defuse the bomb and get this snowball going. Yeah, maybe. You know they have they really have to be confident and they really have to be proactive in making things happen early um they've really got to look for these early skirmishes to try and you know, choke, choke out the map early and just stop uh the side of team cerebus from coming back into the game because that's really the only way they can win yeah and so we'll see what they do in the early game maybe something like a uh, early invade but for now we will just Wait it out, go to uh, the game, and we'll see you there. Yeah, we'll see you in the game.
she fed it quite tough Always having bad luck You think you're going crazy Look up, there's a new life waiting Your head's buried in the sand You've been dealt the wrong hand Can't imagine how you feel Only you know that it's real Don't look back, just carry on Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game two of tonight's BSV Open Circuit Gamma Division 2, uh, brought to you by Lit Team Aussie Broadbang and Aftershock PC. I'm Quiddy, and I'm here with my co-caster, Ro. Uh, again, standard spread from both teams. Yep. Quiddy, I don't think there's going to be much going on. If anything goes on, it's going to be because someone stepped up too far or someone's accidentally taken a tower shot. So... The early games are not so great for either team. <laughs> Diana definitely can be quite oppressive early once you start getting the uh, their E, so you can actually mm. dash forward, trade with that Oriana, and of course at level 6 definitely can look for lethal then, but that's really the only action that's going to happen if Ezra and Yumi are respectable, because Lulu and Twitch can be quite oppressive if they don't respect it and do they actually allow Twitch to try for le lethal on the Ezreal. I do feel like that um, Corbett Gaming does have, they do have the pressure on them to make things happen and they have to actively look for these plays, which, you know, is, is pretty hard for them because a lot, a lot can go wrong. And if they start falling behind, uh, you know, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible for them to come back into the game. Uh, uh, opposite sides for the junglers, both of them starting at their red buff, possibly looking to path into each other. Maybe we do see the mid lane, nothing too spicy gonna happen yet, as you say. That three clamp by the Zinzao we saw last game as well, and we're gonna see it again this game as mm. he goes towards his blue and his grump. But this game is a lot harder to get a put a uh, gank off, especially because bot lane doesn't actually have uh, any kill pressure pushing in early game as you can see mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard for Zinzat to actually access either of them and then Lulu is just very good at diffusing ganks so Zinzao might just reverse clear I would respect that but in terms of looking for ganks not really going to be able to get much done yeah of course then you know Kale's taking a... dead. Oh, Kale actually takes a favorable trade here. Now, Orn actually gets the stun, though. Kale is taking a lot of minion damages. That is first blood going to DDSH on this Orn. Now, of course, that is... That's kind of what you need, but Kale not going to be too fussed about that. It's, that champion does scale pretty well, and all he needs to do is play safe. But a bit of a mistake there, taking that fight in that big mini wave. However, this bot lane... He's Nash going to be able to get these orders in with this level tempo. However, it has run out now. Expunge is going to add even more damage. Lonely Kiwi going to try and finish off the kill with that Ignite. Getting pretty low himself. Not quite going to pressure. Meanwhile, though, Nobaku 
is looking here. He is in a very good position coming from this tri bush. They don't know he's there yet. Lonely Kiwi. Oh, there he is. Little Lance is going to try and slow him down. The spear lands with the audacious charge. Where's the knockup? Polymorph is going to delay that. TP going to deter that from Smaze. As they're going to keep the chase, the orb is going to go down. That is a kill to from the Baku. The Baku is not going to be happy about that as the Zins are dying this early. And even though Zinzao has quite a good angle, he actually greets for the Twitch. Definitely should have gone for the Lulu there, because exactly as I said, Lulu's so good at defusing ganks. He tries to go on the Twitch, but immediately the Polymorph just completely mm. removes any hope he has, and they're just going to wow. kill Ezreal yeah. under the tower. Yes, gonna kill. Yeah, they're just going to get deleted under the tower. Both of them getting very low here. Actually taunting a bit. Oh my god, that is going to... That, <laughs> that red buff is actually going <laughs> to tower aggro. And that's going to get him killed. Of course, the Ignite from Nanake is going to get him another one. So that's actually a double kill onto this Yumi. What we did gloss over, though, QWERTY, is that Kale got a kill up in the top lane. Udia came around, mm. helped to dive that on, and Kale is now back in the driver's seat again. Eventually, a, a prolonged one-for-one, one, let's say, <laughs> mm -hmm. in the long term. And so Twitch got the gold. Yumi... Yumi got two kills but the gold is but, on yumi which is yeah but well, it's yumi <laughs> mid lane nothing really gonna happen of it it's just so hard if, once diana gets six once Orn gets six maybe yumi as well is, is a big there's a lot of big spikes here in the mid game once we start getting to like a first item and a ultimate but for now it's just so hard and e even in the jungle i mentioned earlier Udi is going to be out of able to outfarm the Sin Zhao, but you can see it in practice right now, up a whole three camps on the Sin Zhao, it's only going to grow. It's only, you know, as a champion that scales much better than Sin Zhao too, that's going to be very difficult for him. Having that death definitely put him behind in terms of those clear, those clears as well. Uh, oh, there comes the knock-up from the Orn, the flames are going to go through with that grasp, not going to commit. However, Little Lance not quite connecting in the bot lane. Nanake pops out just for an auto, gets Polymorph, not going to quite get much done there. She does have double buff for the red buff ticking down. So you see Shark actually going for a lane gank there, but they do spot him. That one melee yeah. minion is able to see that. It's a potential setup for Dragon here. I'm not sure if they saw Zinzal, but if they did see Zinzal, this is indeed just a free Dragon here. Mm -hmm. Uh... And that's actually a, a, a huge deal because, oh wait, Ezreal going forward. Oh my god. That actually, Yumi, that Yumi heal actually winning that little fight there. Lulu trying to go for a ward to kind of go for the trade while the Lulu was temporarily absent. This Udia are going to get a bit low. Smite's for the HP. Since it's on the top lane of the map, so Smite can be used freely as such. That is the first dragon going towards Team Cerberus. That is a rather significant amount of camps that Uda just gave up. Uh, like a two, he, he had a large camp lead, but he's pretty much all, completely lost it in exchange for that dragon. It's not the end of the world getting them mm -hmm. stacking, especially this early when your team's not online. Oriana, Kale, Twitch all really need some items before they're online. Preventing the enemy team from stacking it up, making your own stack start up is a huge deal. So it's not the end of the world that he is going to lose a lot. As a result of that dragon, uh, because the long term is what we care about, especially with these uh, all the scaling right. that we have in our comps. And so, opting for that Kim Tank, maybe with that Barmy Cinder, of course, not quite seeing Kim Tank being uh, used after its nerf. Uh, good to see it back again on this map for a bit of diversity, a very refreshing as the, both these junglers are going to go back and take their red buffs. Now, potential play might be happening mid here as. Diana very pushed up. However, top lane, though, the knockup does go through. Smug E-Girl not quite going to find the damage she needs. This Orn is very tanky with that Barmy Cinder. Knockup does go through again. Her ultimate is used to try and keep her alive. The flames are burning. She is going to live on 1 HP. Orn actually take very favorable, taking control of the lane for the time being. As you see, both junglers might actually have a bit of a clash there as they do have a bit of a similar idea. Shark going to run at Nobaku. Both... Having red buffs, there comes the bear slap with the tiger. And the phoenix is going to have that burn with the AoE. Goes back to bear for the stun. However, the Dish is here to support. Doesn't quite connect the knockup. This is a 3v2 now. Shockwave is going to go through to, to secure that kill. And that is just 
a more proactive roam or Smez is just able to get there quicker than Yadon can on this Diana. In the end of the day, it's all about the Udir just beating the absolute crap out of this Xin Zhao, as you can He's see. He's doing it again, more. yeah. There it is. And he is 1 HP, though. The Kale heal does go through. Goes back for that bear slap. Oh, my God, you're crazy. Going to get taken down with that Crescent Strike. And trading kills there with Yadon. It, the fact that the junglers would delay this long and Udia got through is 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 a miracle in of itself. Mir Udia is just very simple to pilot. He farms mm -hmm. so fast and he's so effective for what he does. Uh, you just go in your best lap and you you provide so much early game dominance that Zinzao just can't match. Is actually oh all in. Oh, that is a double stun with a true shot barrage going through. That is not quite enough damage, though, as the spray and pray and the expunge is going to finish them off. Wild Growth going to keep Lonely Kiwi alive for the time being. Yumi all by himself. Now, of course, Maze is out of mana in the mid lane. Flash with a knockup from No Baku. One more auto attack. He's taking tower shots, though, with the audacious charge. And the shield does come through. Actually, not quite enough to get the kill. Maze does take that. Man, what a close one from No Baku. And you're definitely at a scaling disadvantage. We said this before, but still they're making the most of this Udir, who's providing so much. Zin is desperately trying to get stuff done. We said that we wanted to see him actually get something, but right. Diana and Zin are both struggling to actually find the thing. And all of the gold, the, the two kills they do have of the four, two of them are on the Yumi. And so it might seem like, okay, they are significantly behind, but it, they're even more behind than you might originally think because the, the gold is just not where you want it. Yeah, of course, I know Baku on the Zen having a very rough game currently, uh, having about 1,000 gold less than his counterpart. Do you see Shark going to try to look for something here? Outnumbered for the time being as Kale is a slightly relatively far away. So not going to go for anything too crazy. Meanwhile, Smay is just taking this plating. Actually gets a kill's worth of gold from these two platings here. Yadon, meanwhile, losing the CS in the mid lane as well. Now, looks like something might happen down this bot lane. No Baku is going to clear Scuttle. Potentially looking for the same situation again. Oh, looks like he will run into some friends. Oh, look at Spear does... Go through is going to have to back off. Look at the shark, man, on this Udir. Two levels ahead of no back. The spike comes through. Audacious Charge wants to take the fight. Not quite sure. There's the Crescent Strike and the Moonfall is going to come in. The True Shot Barrage not quite finding anything there. Yadon's Diana. One more Crescent Strike is going to get it. There it is. Uh, we're not done yet, though. Lonely Kiwi finding himself a bit of a rough spot. Looks for that Blast Cone. No Baku is going to take a lot of damage from Twitch. Oh, Twitch actually wants to go back in. Very dangerous. You're not a frontline champion. Mystic Shot's coming over the wall. Crescent Strike does connect as well. Decides the Blast Cone over that wall and disengages. End of the day, the one the one weakness Udia has is that you can go too far, right? You can just mm -hmm. be like, oh, I can fight anyone. I can do anything because I, I can get away with it. But you can uh, over-index and actually Lulu just moves straight into the Fog of War. Despite having no junglers, actually, this is a huge spray and pray. A huge spray and pray, getting four people in there. Lulu, the wild growth helping keep my man. Oh my god, they're still taking these autos from this Twitch. Expunge is not going to go through to get any of these kills here. The shark, not too quite, not quite happy about last time. He is going to keep going. Bear slaps. He is in a one v three. They're going to get taken down very quickly. Leaders with the knock up on this Twitch. He is out of mana. Has to flash to get out of that. TP coming through from Ego on this Kale. She's going to go in. More auto attacks going through from Twitch. The Flash, Adidas is going to have to flash. Flash from the Kale. That's a kind of a 1v4. They're all low HP, though. Can I get anything out of this? Ji Hoon lives on 1 HP. Going to have to flash over the wall again. Two Shot Barrage coming back. Hits all four members, but none of them are quite low enough. Uh, looks like everyone's going to survive for the time being. And wow, that was completely unnecessary. <laughs> there's, so, <laughs> there's so much done there. So much fighting over nothing. The Dragon is always getting taken by Red Team. But they decide to face check the dragon anyway. Lonely, Ki Lonely Kiwi gets caught, and then TPs get invested. People run down. Udir decides to just run into the enemy team again, and again he, he just gets bursted for his trouble. And even the Kale Keep he gets utilized to very little reason or rhyme because Udir is essentially their engage quotation marks. Uh, he's going to be the one carrying Oriana's ball. He's going to be the one hoisting a Kale ultimate most likely, and then just going and diving their backline. 
Um, and so when he's not there, especially when he's just completely ran into the enemy team and died, that that's your ability to actually reach the enemy team pretty much gone, especially with no one online yet. Of course, these are all scaling champions, which is why mm. it was very, very uh, overforced and rather strange that we were there for so long. But back to our regularly scheduled program of Kale farming and Oriana farming and Twitch also just preparing for later <laughs> into this game. As you see, Rift Hero uh, actually going to be taken by no Baku here. Uh, going to be able to sneak that in. Uh, potentially, you know, here's the thing. And this is something that uh, most people don't really think about is that, yeah, like generally overall winning the game is pushing turrets. But do you really want to push turrets this early into this late game scaling team comp? Oh, never mind that fort as uh, the trade's going to go down with the Twitch landing these autos. Expunge. Is not going to quite get him low with the help of that Yumi heal. And you'll notice it's so hard for Twitch uh, and and Lulu to kill. Oh, but as dive. I said, yeah, yeah, four man dive. The smite goes through. The bear slap's going to lock him down under that turret. The Lumi books are not doing much there. Actually, it does get a return kill onto Shaka. Shaka's actually been dying a lot these fights. Uh, he's kind of going to be losing his lead, but does outscale though. See, oh my god, that's another solo kill coming in from the top lane. Spiky Girl living with that one HP, being able to take on under that tower with the help of that ultimate divine judgment keeping her alive. Yeah, and that was a 2v1. Xin Zhao and Orn both dying on the top side to the Kale. This is a very fed Kale, and this is the, the, uh, all of the deaths. Oh, oh actually, as Oriana's dying. <laughs> She's gonna, the Ignite's gonna be ticking down, doesn't quite have the shield back off cooldown yet. And the kills are going across the board, the this is where the game is very flaring up, man. <laughs> and, you know, what can they do off of this? Because this is actually not too bad, you have the Udir, which is actually getting a bit overzealous in a lot of these fights. Um, you know, is that gonna help him at all? That was, that was essentially what I was about to bring up, was that, yes, uh, they do have some kills. They have managed to get some winning fights, but they're all Udyr's deaths. And that's important because Udyr's been farming these camps and dying. And what mm. that means is that the laners have still been picking up waves, they've still been soaking EXP, and Udyr's not their primary carry. He, it would be more favorable if he wasn't feeding Golden to enemy team, but it's okay because the, the Orianna, the Twitch, and the Kale are still doing fine, in particular the Kale, but, uh, they're all doing just fine. They're still scaling. They've still got so much gold in their pockets. It means that uh, it, it's a, it's similar to the Yumi oh, having all those Oh, there we go. The smite's going to be a slap. This is going to arcane shift away. Wildgrove knocks up two. Twitch, however, right in the middle. That's not where you want to be. Shark, he is kind of in a 1v3 situation there. Might get taken out again. Has to flash out of that one. Smaze is coming back. He's looking. Shockwave is almost up. Just a couple seconds. He is looking for it. Wow. Meanwhile, he's going to get... Very chunked so hard. Shockwave does catch free though, but they're also low to follow up. Mystic shots from Jihoon putting in so much damage there. And I didn't catch what started that fight. Pretty messy 4v4 in the middle. Uh, as Kale doesn't have TP to actually make it. Uh, and they do end up trading pretty evenly. As that Orianna's ward, still looking for this. That ward actually, they're, they're right, actually started that fight and looks like it might start another one. As Jihoon is going to look for these kills, Maze very low, Mystic Shot's going to land, not quite enough, lives on 1 HP, has to recall for the time being. And this is very bad timing now for Smaze, because Dragon is up. It looked like they were fighting over Vision, because Dragon is actually, Kale's going to try and dive this Diana. Oh, Divine Judgment going to try and go through, the Flash lands that damage, and is actually going to kill this Diana. This Kale was already one be wanting people at this point in the game in under 20 minutes. This is a fed Kale. This is not a normal Kale. Level 13, 17 minutes, seven kills. It's gonna be on a 10 stack Dark Teal and two items after this base. It, it's, it's like gigantic tail. She is absolutely huge and no one can answer her on the side lane. I don't even think a 2v1, any 2v1 can answer her. She, she could even beat the majority of 3v1s at this point as Twitch is actually out of his element. Jeez. We're caught up there. Spray and Prey gonna... Oh my god, shoot shot barrage not quite in the right direction. Spray and Prey is gonna kite. Look at the attack moves. No, Baku is going to be taken down. Not quite tanky enough. Here's the knock up. Not quite connecting. That stealth helping them... Oh my god, he's just gonna come back with the stealth from the back line. 
that Yumi Heal doing so much though. Heals Jihoon back up to more than half HP. Shark is looking for the smite that was going down. Where's that bear slap? That's going to go on to the Yumi. Not quite the target you're looking for, but you're going to get that kill anyway. Lonely Kiwi actually KSs that one. However, she does find herself on the front line having to flash out double Lunar Rushes. Is almost going to kill her. The flames not quite finding it. The pillar, the shields, they're not going to take down Lonely Kiwi. Uh, oh my god, Shark comes back with the bear slap onto the Orn. Not quite that target you want. Little Lance not quite connecting as well. Mystic Shot, just going to be a little bit of damage on the way out. And I'd like to take a moment to really talk about uh, last game versus this game. Because, man oh man, in this draft, <laughs> we were like, okay, this is going to be a scaling. Nothing's going to happen. Whatever. Um, and also, you were also talking a lot last game about uh, these players knowing when to, to back off. And uh, picking good skirmishes was, was a big topic as well. But mm -hmm. this game, we saw the draft. Okay, we're scaling. Okay. Nothing's really going to happen. Okay, we're going to be disciplined. And then we get into game and it's just non-stop fighting. 24 kills. Um, we're just fighting over whatever we want, whenever we want. I, I really appreciate that uh, you, can't, you can't just see the draft and be like, oh, I know what's going to happen here. Uh, these players definitely have their quirks still. You know, it is a scaling comp, but like like, if, like we all see here, this Kale having that Mythic and that Nash's tube with seven kills, very powerful. So she's actually very happy to fight, and uh, she's kind of, you know, almost done with scaling. As a definitely very powerful and split pushing in the side lanes, generating this huge threat, having that TP available as well. She, she is going on to be a very accelerated level 16 and three items and both of those things are terrifying for a kale nonetheless a kale that has these excellent support in the form of a lulu in the form of udi and or ayana is going to be able to enable her and she's going to be enabled them so i'm i'm terrified for this for this uh next few minutes that's for sure you know it's like cool bad gaming is going to take control of this. Looks like this might be a mid lane turret dive as Shark is going to come through looking for that bear slap. Is going to get knocked up. Does get half HP. Newbie is going to root him in place. Loot Wild Grip is going to help keep him alive. Two Shot Barrage coming through as well for a bit of damage. Knock up does go through on Lonely Kiwi. They're going to try and look for it, but that's not going to quite happen because Shark is there zoning them. This Kale is here though. This monster is here with the damage and they will back off for the time being. That threat. Oh my god, they are going to find something here. Unish Nesm with that Twitch is going to come out of stealth with that attack speed bonus, laying in auto attacks. Doesn't quite have Spray and Prey yet for this one. So yeah, it looks like something might happen on this Draining, and this bush is not water. Sweeper does go through. This is our spear lands. And Chug on half HP, a bit dangerous there's there. There's no dragon. <laughs> there's no dragon. It's not up yet. How Chug does go in. Gets instantly deleted by four people. Unish Nesm is on this Twitch, however, does get... Hit by that Moonfall is going to get deleted as well. Smaze out of mana on the side, on the wrong side of the map. What can you do? This Kale has not joined the fight yet. This absolute monster of a damage machine is going to come in. This is a bit of a 1v3 though. Doesn't quite have any support nearby. In the fight of this Gromp, this is now four people going to challenge this. Lenny Kiwi is going to get dashed on right over the wall. Audacious Charge going to pick up that kill. You are by yourself. This Kale, what can you do? Ultimate to keep you alive does take one as that stopwatch, but oh, the true shot barrage is going to finish that off. And I really wanted, I, I interjected to say there's no dragon because man, they just love Ooh. to fight. <laughs> <laughs> there's no dragon, the Baron is up, they have this mid priority, but. There's no objective they're fighting over. Both teams are accepting this fight. They're continuing it rather than backing off or trying to go somewhere else. Kale isn't even coming to the fight, even though Kale's right there and Ezreal oh is just by himself. He's just going to get flash, bear slapped. And that damage coming through from Usenish on that Twitch along with Shark CC is going to be able to take him out. And Ezreal being caught at this critical moment, that'll be a dragon just going over. And 2-2 two to two in the dragons is very good. I talked about preventing energy from sc stacking dragons. This is it in practice. And of course, if you have a Kale, if you have a Twitch and Lulu, you're definitely a big fan of uh, equalizing dragons, if not getting the mm -hmm. soul yourself. So are they even going to look at the, the Baron? They've got pings on it. And they can definitely shred it uh, if, the, if the Kale does TP. But maybe she will just be looking for the 16 in the sideline. 
Yeah, I know. It felt like that they were trying to set up this dive on the mid lane, and then unexpectedly to both teams, everyone just kind of showed up, and that kind of gave a bit of hesitation. And then they started walking back and forth in the jungle and just started, you know, just started looking for fights. And with the odd positioning as well, you see the side of Corbat kind of loop all the way around from mid to kind of go behind uh, some members of Team Cerebrus. And then, you know, there's just fights happening all over the place unexpectedly and that are just unplanned. And they, they don't even blue trinket the Baron. They just give it up entirely. They're just like, okay, they can have it. As they try to catch this Kale on the sideline, Diana's there, but if she goes in too early, she it's can get three levels down. It's three levels down the horn. Knockup is not quite going to land. Smuggy girl going to desperately try to kite. Does have a level of flashes to dodge that knockup. Beautiful. Has that divine judgment. Keep her alive. This is now a 2v1. Audacious Charge is going to try and get that in. Shockwave with that damage is going to take down No Baku. And it's beautiful TP by Smay is trying to bailing his teammate out of jail there. And that is just a gutter because now you have two people down and the enemy has Baron and they want to seize your turrets. The important thing there, I said that I think Kale can win most 2v1s, if not 3v1s. It ended up being uh, a 2v1 for the majority of it, because it was, Zinzal wasn't there yet. And mm -hmm. it's especially bad, and you're especially going to be uh, able to win it if you have or nowhere near the Kale. There is, it's basically a 1v1 with someone eventually coming to uh, follow up with their own 1v1 rather than a 2v1. And that's, that's the issue there. You actually have to be really coordinated if you want to collapse on this Kale and... If, if they're good at they're pro providing vision for the KO, making sure that she's not getting collapsed on, then it's very hard to organize something like that. Yeah, just look at his positioning, just not afraid to go on the turret. Takes three quarters of the health from Nobaku, despite having that Yumi. I Meanwhile, the Wild Growth does go on to the KO, has that Zonyas to keep her alive, dodges the two-shot barrage. She is tanking turret, though, audacious charge, and that massive shockwave is going to find all the members of Corbab Gaming. And the AoE is going to wipe them all to the gray screen. And they're going to take this map. Game. Yeah. That will be game as we just... We, we're going to pile drive through all of these Nexus Towers. There's going to be absolutely nothing to stop them. And these are Boy, heavy buff, hitters. Baron buff as well. And, and wow. It, the Shockwave hits so many members because Kale, No flash. No ultimate. Just standing up in their faces. Completely unafraid of the consequences. And that's the power of the scaling. You get there eventually, and then it's just impossible to actually organize a good fight. And that's just... Poof! Suddenly, the game completely turns on its head, and you get taken out at the 26-minute mark. In 26-minute mark. GG's. And game two goes towards Team Cerebrus. Now, that was a very rough game for Corbap Gaming. I mean, they... You know, you see them desperately trying to make things happen, but, you know, they're just dying a lot, with, especially with early champions like Zinzal falling behind this early. Also, the Orn in the top lane, uh, you know, giving a, a few too many deaths to this Kale to help her scale and become the monster. Uh, th this was a breeze game for whoever that's playing Kale right now. Yeah, the Kale got so out of control, just absolutely murdering the Orn. The Orn just... I had a good early game, Kale not able to do much, but after Kale got one or two kills, it was just all over. Just diving on mm. under his tower, 2v1ing the Zinzao and the Orn without any assistance. It was really, really rough. And once you've got a Kale that far ahead, you have to have some very strong um, scaling or engage on your side to actually uh, take it out. And unfortunately, they didn't have that. Even so, it's, it's it, you know, she becomes so much of a problem because you do have that Lulu as well. And on top of that, uh, you know, Spiky Girl, she did buy Zonyas too. So that's going to be very rough to deal with. That Zonyas, you're being able to store and having champions like Diana and Zinza where you need to commit. And when you've got to play against that Zonyas and knowing that you can just get instantly deleted, that is just... That was just very difficult, if not impossible, to pull off. In the end, it comes down to those fourth and fifth picks deciding to go for the early game. Since you see all that scaling, but you yourself have so much scaling in your comp that it's hard to get an early game snowball that is strong enough to derail them. That's and right. in the end, they just get taken down. They tried their best, but unfortunately, 
it wasn't enough and that is it for tonight's bsv open circuits gamut division two thank you guys for joining us i have been qwerty with my with me right now is my co-caster ro and thank you guys for watching and stay tuned because there'll be more circuit games coming up not after this but in the future Cause you are a stranger